Hey guys, Linode now has managed Kubernetes and they're keeping their usual simple pricing model. There's no management fees like AWS and other cloud providers. They even bundle transfer so you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. With the amount you save, if you're doing any K8s, it really doesn't make sense to use anybody else but Linode. It's now even easier to connect to your Linode account. With one less login to remember, you can use your GitHub account. Give it a shot. The link is in the description tab of this video below. And if you use that link, you'll get a $20 credit. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what I'm going to talk about is how to master programming. And really, this is an advice video on how to learn programming. Because I feel that I get that question all the time. People are always asking me, like, how quickly can I learn how to become a programmer? And we all know that there's like a lot of stuff that goes into that. But uh, this video is going to be like how to master it, how to study it, and really th some of the things that worked for me. All right, so number one, I've been doing this for 10 years now, and I can tell you that a lot of the stuff that I'll mention are things that I still do and uh, the things that are still working for me. So first and foremost, I probably don't need to mention this, but like sleeping properly, so eating, drinking, sleeping, exercise, all that stuff is good. Drugs, alcohol, all that stuff is bad. Too much caffeine, coffee, that's bad. Sitting in your, in your, on your ass too long at your desk is bad. Uh, all those things can make you an ineffective programmer uh, and make things a lot more difficult for you. So just do the obvious. So I won't exactly say get comfortable because for some people, especially for like this guy in this office here, it's probably impossible. But you do have to limit your um, your verbal and audio distractions when when you're learning. So we know the brain is a sponge. It's constantly growing and adapting. Even into our old age, we can learn new things. But one thing you should know is that programming is not easy. So the only person that's going to tell you that programming is easy uh, are idiots or or people that are disconnected from reality. And I assume like there are some programmers out there. I don't really know of any. Um, but there are certain programmers that I, I assume could be so good that they think everything is easy, but I think it's a pretty much proven fact for just about everybody out there that programming is not an easy thing. And, uh, and 99% of the people that do say it, like I said, are just dicks, uh, or people that, that have no idea what they're talking about. The bottom line though, is you have to embrace the challenge. I think that it does help. For instance, about a year and a half ago, I joined a new team and I was going to end up having to go from a Windows machine to using a Mac. And like really, I had to relearn a lot of stuff that I was very used to on my Windows machine. But I looked at it as an opportunity that I was going to a new team. I ended up buying myself my own personal Mac so that I could start learning on my own. And I just kind of looked at it in a positive mindset. And then like it really only took about six weeks or so and I really feel, felt like after that time, like um, I, I was pretty, uh, pretty performant with it. So in my opinion, it, like the mindset that I had going into that team and, and embracing that challenge was able to help me a lot. And the fact is, though, you can't cram computer science. You can't cram learning to code. It's not something that you can do in a day's time. Even like chess, um, chess is a game that takes a long time to master. Now, there are certain prodigies that can do chess, but chess is still a relatively defined game with um, you know, millions of possibilities, but the, all the computations are there. We're able to, uh, to achieve the, the similar thing in computer science like a long time ago, back in the 80s, really. Uh, replicating chess is what I'm talking about. Um, but the, the point that I'm trying to make with computer science versus something like chess is that like computer science is much more open-ended. It's not a, a game with distinct possibilities. It's, uh, it's completely ever changing and constantly moving and nobody just learns it or masters it. And, um, it, it's just a constant lifelong struggle. So while cramming won't go far, practice and repetition will, I think really, equating computer science or learning to program is probably very similar to something like learning to play guitar. When you first learn to play guitar, especially an electric guitar, uh, or really especially an acoustic guitar, it, it really messes up your fingers. I mean, you got the, the razor wire that's like, you, you got to build calluses in your fingers. So that's one of the things that is going to prevent you from becoming an expert overnight. But another thing is this muscle memory that you end up getting um, when you familiarize yourself with a guitar, when you start to, uh, when you really learn to, to play, you get this muscle memory. And the same thing is, is true with programming. You get 
uh, this, these recollections of, of previous code that you've written, of logic, of architectural patterns, and um, you just naturally start to put it all together. You also start to kind of view the world around you in terms of code and object-oriented like uh, principles and such. But the transformation happens over a period of time. And there were times that I woke up in the middle of my sleep and I'm like, oh, I know how to solve that problem, or I'm going about that the wrong way or something. Um, but that stuff just happens over time and, and it's not something you can cram. But what you can do is get better, faster by practicing every single day. Practicing maybe just for a single hour if you can do that, if not 30 minutes. Um, try to do at least 30 if you can do that, otherwise it's going to take you forever. But what I think helped me is that I tried to do repetition type of things, but I didn't actually just repeat the same thing over and over. Um, it is a good idea if you're watching a video or reading a book and somebody like uh, says a phrase to you or they, they explain a concept to you that you're able to repeat that back to yourself and that you could then, you know, I, I would say try to take it a step further and try to, you know, maybe explain to yourself what that means in a different type of way. Uh, that tried, that really challenges your understanding of a subject. But in, in coding, so much of it is repetition. So it's not something that like there is like a perfect methodology that you can use. A lot of it is repetition. It's coding. But my suggestion with that is that you don't repeat the same code that you've done over and over again. So for instance, if you've made a console app in Python and it asks you like what's your favorite color or this or that, the other thing, um, the next time you go to make that program, you know, don't do it every single hour. Like build your console app, wait a couple of days, build another console app, and then but expand upon it. Change, you know, the variables around a little bit. Write it a little bit differently. Uh, don't try to memorize it line for line. That's not really going to help you. But my point is that coding, for me, learning how to do it was a lot of like repetition of, okay, I've done this before. I need to do it again. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, write it over again. Now I used to save all my code. I used to like little basic things. Like how do I read all the files in a directory? I'd have like a Python script that just did that. And I'd have to save it because I had no confidence in myself that I was going to be able to figure out how to do that again. But what used to seem impossible now is something that I've just built up confidence. I, I now have enough confidence in my coding ability where I feel like it's not done in Kruger to be like, okay, I know how to figure out how to, iterate through all files in a directory with Python. So that's really it. I mean, if you guys want to learn how to code as quickly as possible, there's no shortcut. You got to hack away. You got to write code every day. Be creative. Don't be repetitive. This isn't something you can cram. You can't just like cram a bunch of keywords and acronyms. Those are things that you're going to have to learn as well, but it's not like there's some test that says, hey, you're now a programmer. It's about whether or not you can write code day in and day out. So um, you know, if you're able to have somebody review your code, that's going to be able to help you get good feedback on the things that you're not doing effectively enough. You need to also understand that bugs are okay. Bugs are a normal part of doing software. It's normal for professionals and smart coders to have bugs. It's just something that, that uh, is, it's a great way of learning. Right? We learn through failure all the time and bugs are not associated with failure, but uh, it is uh, something that is normal. So Anyway, another thing you can also do is practice high-level code. There's no reason why you have to actually write your, your actual programs in computer code. You could actually do higher-level diagrams. I've actually used UML diagrams to map out website architecture where I'm like, okay, I need a website, has a login that does this, I need a profile page, and this profile needs to have this information. A lot of times I'm jotting that stuff down in a UML type of diagram and um, while I don't use pseudocode, a lot of people do swear by pseudocode where you could actually do like your if, else, all that logical conditions and such. You can do that in a pseudocode. I feel like for me, I'm like, yeah, pseudocode's too similar to like Python type code. So if you are using Python, which is very beginner friendly as far as like, like English spoken language, then uh, I think it's very similar to pseudocode. So I don't really use it. All right, guys, to wrap this up, and this is important, is to find your learning style. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can learn these days. There's YouTube videos. You can go to like places like Udemy. You can, you can go to my website, Chris Hawks. Uh, really, it's codehawk.com. But you can learn directly with me. The point is you can learn through video, through tutorials, through websites. Uh, whatever works for you. 
th that's going to be the method that you should choose. And, and some people are going to swear, swear by videos. Some people want to do traditional books. And whatever you choose, um, that should be a personal decision for you. But assuming you guys do like to do video tutorials, make sure you check out my website. I have tutorials out there for pretty much everything web development and then also for some just overall general programming as well. But I recommend the All Access Bundle if you guys are interested because this will give you access to all the videos for one price and there's over 25 courses. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.